Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to upgrade your PC to an M.2 style solid state drive, either SATA based or PCIe based. And I'll be running through a number of scenarios from simple to relatively complex that should cover most of the situations you'll encounter depending on your hardware and the upgrade you're performing. Now, the simplest will be moving from a hard drive or solid state drive in the 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch form factors to an M.2 style drive if you have a free M.2 slot on your motherboard. Now that's going to be the scenario you'll encounter if you have never used that M.2 slot and you just want to upgrade to this new form factor. Make sure the M.2 slot is there, first of all, many older motherboards won't have them. And some of the first motherboards to include M.2 slots actually use the 2260 form factor that is not used today. You have to have the 2280 form factor. So check the specs on your motherboard if it's a few years old. Now, again, if you have that free M.2 slot, this is quite simple. You just use the cloning software included with your solid state drive and you perform that clone. Now, keeping in mind that cloning software is only for operating system drives or your boot drive. You don't need to use that if it's a data drive. For instance, say you just have a drive full of movies and videos and music and maybe even some applications, but not Windows. Well, you don't want to use cloning software for that because it's much slower and more complex. All you have to do is actually copy that data over. So if you are leaving your OS drive intact and you're just plugging this into a free M.2 slot for your secondary drive, maybe for your games or your content creation apps, just copy those over. You don't have to do a clone. Now, there is a more complex scenario moving from one of these drives to one of these drives if the original drive is actually a larger capacity. This is going to be very common if you're using a hard drive today. Moving to an SSD is a great upgrade. They're much faster, but say you have a two terabyte drive, you don't need that space, but you don't want to buy a two terabyte solid state drive because they're really expensive. Well, typical cloning software can't handle this move because one drive's bigger and the next drive's smaller. You have to use some software to shrink the partition, and I'll be showing you how to do that. It is a little bit more complex. Now, another complex scenario is if you're upgrading from an M.2 drive to another M.2 drive and you only have one slot in your motherboard. Obviously, you don't have the physical space there, but that's where the ECM22 adapter from Silverstone comes in handy. I'll be using this adapter to perform just that type of upgrade, moving from a SATA-based M.2 drive to a PCIe-based drive. Why would you do that? Well, PCIe-based drives are much faster, up to 10 times faster, in fact. But most motherboards manufactured before 2019 only have one slot. So that's where this adapter comes in handy. So without further ado, let me get into some of the drives I used in this upgrade process and I'll show you how to perform each of the upgrades I described. The easiest upgrade is from a smaller capacity to a larger capacity drive where you have a free M.2 slot. In this situation, you simply install the card by sliding it into the slot it fits in pretty easily and you'll notice that it's usually spring loaded so you will need to screw it down and you'll need a Phillips number zero screwdriver. That's kind of a jeweler's type screwdriver and the screw does come with the motherboard. I get that question a lot. Once the drive is physically installed, you'll need to download your drive's migration or cloning software. Here I'm showing the Samsung data migration software. It only works with Samsung drives and specifically a Samsung target disc, which I don't have in the system right now, but if I did, I'd be able to hit start and it would take care of the rest for me. Now, what if we had the same scenario, except the source drive is larger than the destination drive. Here I'm upgrading from a slow 960 gigabyte drive to a much faster 512 gigabyte drive. Even if I'm not using all the space on the 960 gigabyte drive, I still will have a problem with most cloning software. Here, Samsung software is actually offering up a potential solution of deleting or moving some files, but ultimately, it's pretty messy. You don't really want to try this without shrinking the volume first. And that's where Windows built-in disk management software comes in handy. It allows you to shrink a volume. Here, it's showing me that I could get down to 540 gigabytes or so, which isn't quite small enough for a 512 gigabyte drive. But if I could delete a few files and then shrink it, then I'd have some luck. And at that point, I'd have two partitions and I would delete the second volume. Now for this particular cloning project, I was actually cloning to an A-Data XPG drive. So I downloaded the free Acronis software that they include. The resulting clone looked intact, but couldn't be used as a boot drive. 
And this was after having to go through the whole registration process through XPG to get a Cronus in the first place. I was actually thinking of showing how to do this in the video, but it's just a waste of time because I didn't even find the software that great. Instead, I turned to another software suite that's free from Aomi. The very first bullet point says that it will actually clone from larger to smaller drives, but that actually does not come in the free version. You have to pay for it. So I took a different route and had a successful clone. This does have a lot of features, and one of the cool features this has is SSD alignment even in the free version. And that's actually something that's pretty important because I found that my clone initially was not aligned properly and that will impact performance. But in the end, I was able to do the disk clone with the software and I did not have to pay for it, but I did have to shrink the volume in advance. The last upgrade I'm gonna demonstrate for you wasn't so hard from a software standpoint, but it was pretty hard from a hardware standpoint because I was moving from one M.2 drive to another where I didn't have a free M.2 slot. That's where Silverstone's ECM22 M.2 drive adapter comes in handy. It allows you to install both a PCIe and a SATA based drive simultaneously when you don't have any free slots in your motherboard. Here I am inserting a PCIe drive. Note that the keying of this drive is different than it would be for a SATA drive, hence those labels on the adapter. Once you've attached it via the screw, you can plug it into a PCIe slot. Note that for optimum performance, you do need an X4 slot, which is very uncommon on most motherboards. You'll either see an X8 slot like I have here, or a smaller X1 slot like this one. You can use either. The only difference will be that in an X1 slot, the performance will be severely curtailed, but it will be fine for cloning. Because I do have an X8 slot available here, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And note that if you want to use a SATA drive instead or in addition to a PCIe drive, you have to attach a cable, which would have been included with your motherboard, and then you'll insert the other end into a free port on that board. Once you've booted up your system with the adapter in place, you'll be able to use any cloning software. I actually used the Cronus this time and it was successful because the clone was quite simple. I was cloning from the 850 EVO M.2 drive, which is a SATA drive, to an ADATA XBG 1 terabyte drive, which you'll see come up here as the SX8200 PNP. I select that as my destination, click Next. It will warn me that I do have data on there that could be deleted. I know that I'm going to be cloning to that drive, so I click OK. It allows me to confirm that the results are what I expect, and then I go ahead and start the cloning operation. The final step will be to restart the system so that Acronis can complete the clone outside of the Windows operating environment so that additional changes do not occur to the source disk. Earlier on, I mentioned that if you're just using a drive for a secondary drive, you don't have to clone it, but you still need to get it initialized in Windows. And here I am showing you how to do that. I've selected the GPT format, and as I scroll down here, I see a number of different drives, and my new drive will be down here at the bottom. Here it is, unallocated. I have to right click on it and then start a new simple volume here. Hit next a couple times, choose your drive letter, and then give it a name if you want to. You don't have to, I typically name them based on the actual name of the model I'm using. So I'm gonna type in XPG SX8200 Pro here. Once I click next, Windows will take care of the rest and create that volume for me and it will actually pop up in Windows, at which point I can go ahead and use the drive. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe. Post your questions down below and I'll catch you next time.